Welcome to our dev vlog. Our little dev vlog is so cute. Welcome to our dev vlog. <laughs> it has been an intense week and it's feel, felt so much longer than just one week. We've made an immense amount of progress. Uh, also had to take a lot of shortcuts in order to get to where we are now. And Christopher has also had his wisdom tooth removed. Like, so right here. Bum, 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 I'm colorful. I think that's what jams feel like. Jams is like, you know, you're doing so much at once and making a game from scratch in such a short time. So. They make you into jam, literally. Yep. Welcome to our devlog. We are currently working on a two week uh, game jam. We are in the ending phase of this game. We're almost finished. And uh, we talk about game development and what we're up to. And we want to share this journey with you. So we hope you stick around. Our main goal for this week is to actually get all of the core mechanics uh, all prepared so we can start focusing on polishing the game before we are finished. Two important mechanics we've been working on have been guard distraction, where you can either use a twig or a treat to distract the guard. As this is a stealth game that's quite an important part of the gameplay, the treat pickup seemed quite simple on the surface, but we realized that we need uh, some extra animation and that you need to figure out that you can't pick up two treats at the same time and how they're going to be figuring out which one to carry. This actually became a lot more complex than we first anticipated. Aggro in the guard and then continuing on the walk afterwards was also challenging because they would needed to be immune so they wouldn't be re-aggroed again until reaching the next waypoint. Oh, I still be stuck there forever just walking in circles. Exactly. Yeah. The twig mechanic was far easier because all of the all that was needed was for the player to actually just step on the twig and this would send out an aggro radius towards any nearby guards. And we actually completed this on one of our live Twitch streams. So we actually managed to have two Twitch streams this week, which was actually really interesting and funny. And a lot of community was there helping us out with getting our twigs to actually work and also improving our guard detection system, which was quite hilarious. <laughs> yeah, much thanks to the Twitch for getting that working. We had no clue what we were doing at the beginning. Yeah. Christo also managed to make a butterfly, which ended up looking a lot like a bow for the end of the game. Uh, and we, we managed to integrate it, uh, which was a great suggestion from one of our Twitch viewers, but Christopher's modeling wasn't exactly up to scratch at this point. Maybe that was because he was live on Twitch? I'm not quite sure. I, I get nervous when I model live. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun though. Yeah. In our Tuesday stream, we focused on getting the field of view and detection working for the guard, which, as we mentioned previously, was it was all right, it was mediocre, uh, but we obviously had to do a lot of fixing on it. So one of the big changes we made this time around was uh, how the visualization of the guard's field of view was for spotting the player. Previously, we only had this little gray block, which kind of showed where the guard was actually looking, but it didn't look that good, did it? Yeah, and you could see it through the bushes and didn't know quite if it was in the vision, etc. Yeah. So we had to remake that as uh, an actual mesh, which was generated by ray casting. So we send down rays uh, and then see which of the bushes it hits and like lots of them, but then trying to do it in an optimized way. So, you know, you're not sending too many rays in one frame. And then at the same time, you were trying to figure out if you were hitting an edge to send a bit extra rays down in that area. And uh, then you get much nicer looking mesh from it and it turned out actually quite good. Um, this technique was based on a tutorial by Sebastian Lange and I really recommend uh, that one. It was a great resource and we used that as a basis. We did also a lot of our own work on it in terms of like I had to UV map it uh, which basically means that you know where in the texture space uh, the mesh belongs. So just did a simple cosine on that so you have plotting all the points of this uh, in, a, in a circle so basically we could make it look like a circle and when I was working with this in shader graph for unity we could all plot this out uh, and it uh, looked nice with a shader on it. Yeah it and actually I... did look decent all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. So we also finalized making all of the five levels that we set out to actually make. Um, and also managed to do some of our final assets, like making a bush with some roses on, so it looked a little bit nicer. 
One of the fun models we actually had to make was the doghouse that would house the legendary squeaky toy of all squeaky toys with unlimited squeakiness. Just so you know. Very squeaky. Very squeaky. <laughs> to make it that little bit extra, we added sparkles! Because everybody loves sparkles, right? 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 Everyone loves sparkles. Everyone loves sparkles. Every game needs particle effects. And I was like, where are you going to put it? Sparkles! It was actually the only part in the game we used particle effects entirely. Working with low poly in Blender has been so much fun. Uh, I never knew I could enjoy Blender this much, um, but it's been so much fun, but also challenging to try and find the right tutorials for this. I had to blunder around a few times to find the right tutorials I wanted, but I finally ended up going with a low poly island YouTube video, which is also linked in the description below. So with a new interface update of Blender, you know, everything has changed, so you need to find the most recent ones and find the decent ones among the recent ones, and I'm rhyming. And we ended up using Blender 2.8, so that everything was different and it's still in beta, so everything moves a little bit around. But there's some really good resources on YouTube and that really helped out a lot. Mm, it's been lots of fun working with it. Yeah. Also, what I really love about it is the Unity integration of Blender, how you can just have a blend file and you actually get the model straight into the program. Yeah, or you see the, you know, the model's there, you double click it, you make some changes and it was so quick and snappy, just open it up, it's amazing. So guys, please use Blender, it's awesome. By the way, give your feedback guys on what you think about our low poly models, because, you know, we think they're okay, but they're probably not that good. So just give us some tips, you know, or give us some better tutorials that you know of and we'll follow them. Yeah. I mean, I think that the squeaky toy looks absolutely amazing, so, you know. So we actually have quite a lot of the main elements of the game pretty much finished. We're missing a few things like sound and audio, but that's going to be integrated soon since we have got an amazing audio soundtrack. Made by Tour Trillium. He has uh, been composing like a lullaby inspired uh, soundtrack for the game. Uh, we've also been working on how to make the soundtrack loop properly and uh, how we have the ramp up and yeah, how to fit the soundtrack into the game. Because uh, we wanted to actually make a soundtrack which was a little bit cute and uh, not just like stealth game where it's very like ominous and scary and like you don't want to go in a certain direction because it's evil music. So that's what we ended up trying to go for and it just sounds so good. Yeah, that's what you're hearing right now. and. Uh, yeah, you can hear the inspiration for it, uh, and like the game looks a little bit like dark and gloomy, but we want to try to get some cuteness into it. Uh, it's like a fine balance, this dark and gloomy cute part. And I think the soundtrack uh, does that justice. So you can see we're currently playing the game right now, and we're doing really, really well and playing it super fast, and that might be because we know what each level consists of. Um, but maybe it's a bit too hard, you know, too easy. We're not too sure. You're gonna have to adjust that a little bit with the last few days we have on the game jam itself. It's a bit hard uh, playtesting your own game because you know the solution to all the puzzles and you have no idea if it's too hard or too easy or if you're giving the player enough information in order to solve the puzzle you're trying to present to them. Thank you for watching and being a part of our journey. It has been a lot of fun and we really hope that you have an absolutely great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.